Hello, this is Desolent Tutorials, and today I'm going to show you how to make a vocal pad synth. So um, I'm going to show you what it sounds like right here. That's it, and uh, if you listen right here, you can hear the um, actual vocal. It's, it sounds like a female humming. So I'm going to show you how to make that. So first we're going to delete that. I'm going to make a new track. I'm going to duplicate that track because I need two of them. So <clears throat> if you go down to the description of this video you will see a media fire link and you're gonna click on that and uh download it and when you download it you'll get the zip file zip file right here when you decompress it you'll get this uh folder right here vocal samples you want to click that open you have these two vocal samples you're going to want to take those and put them into logic so if you listen to the first one, it's a humming noise. The second one is like a ooh, oh kind of noise. Ooh, wait, oops, pulled the wrong one in. The heck? Okay, let's try that again. Sorry about that. It's a ooh. And together they sound like this. So when we put this into a pad, it's gonna, like, the higher you play it on the keyboard, the shorter the vocal is gonna be. So you're gonna wanna make it longer. So you're gonna put um, your locators, which is like the looping thing, put it up to seven seven measures and you want to go to audio and go to time stretch regions to locators and that just stretches out making it longer and just for you to know I'm in a like drum and bass tempo so 175 just letting you know that okay so this is what it sounds like notice in the very beginning of this sample these two samples your little popping noise we don't want that because it doesn't sound good so we're going to highlight both these and cut that out and so it sounds a lot better so now we're going to go to audio and time stretch to locators again there we go and so now we're gonna highlight both of these and we're gonna go to bounce regions. And this just puts those two into one audio, one audio file. So the way you get this so you can play on a keyboard and add um, cool effects to it is you're gonna to wanna to right click it, go to convert, and go to convert to new sampler track and for yours it will probably have this as C negative 2 and I put mine up to C2 you can put it up to anywhere you want but you want it to be C because this note is C I'm gonna leave that the same and hit OK so now if you go to C2 or C whatever you put it on the keyboard you play it and it will Play that sound but if you notice if you play anywhere else on the keyboard it won't have any sound so we're going to change that go to open up the sampler and go to edit if you see there's the there's our little sample right there and it's only on c2 so what you want to do is drag it out so you can play it anywhere that sounds cool <laughs> And drag it all the way down too. Okay, 
can exit out of that now and save it. So now you can play chords and stuff. But since we are going for a pad sound, we're going to want to add some attack and release to it. So if you go around here to envelope 2, I'm going to pull the attack up to about, let's see. That's good. This is just um, it's just opinion. This is how I like it. You can put it to how your setting is how you want it to be, of course. I'm just ready to know if you um, if you play it, if you play a C two right here. You can see it's a nice and long note. It's the full seven measures right there. Wait for it. See, it eventually stops. Now if you play, say, C3, it's not as long. If you play C4, it's a lot shorter. And of course, if you play down lower, it's a lot longer. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you're playing chords in the higher octave. So also you can um if you want if you want if like these notes with the higher notes aren't lasting long enough you can always do the tune and put it up two octaves. Or you can put like power chords if you go to a fifth mix a power chord. Yeah. So uh, now I'm just gonna add some reverb to this. Should go to your inserts. Go to reverb, and I normally use the platinum verb, so that's what we're gonna do. And this is just my favorite. I don't know. I just think it sounds the best out of all of them. And the first thing I always do when I open up these is pre-delay all the way down, initial delay all the way down. I think I just messed up something. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna do that again. Actually mess with that. Okay, so now, not much of a difference right now, so we're gonna put the wet all the way up. Now I'm gonna put the reverb time to about three seconds, 3.5 seconds. And you can mess around with that. This is just what I'm using for right now. It sounds really nice, and you can also use this as a synth and play leads and stuff. Also, sounds good doing arpeggios. Stuff like that. It's a really cool uh, synth thing, synth thing, and I just learned this technique not too long ago, so that's why I'm sharing it with you. And you can use that. Um, convert to new sample track on any on any audio file so you can like have like guitar samples and put it to where you can play it on a keyboard you can have anything it's really awesome I would suggest you mess with it more and I suggest you mess with it some more and um that's pretty much it for this tutorial just remember uh I would, if I were you I would add more to this more to this patch because you can add like chorus Ensemble. There's so much, so much more you can do to it. You can even add like some distortion to it to make it sound better. And you can like make these same vocal pads with your own voice if you auto tune it. Because uh, I can't sing. If you can actually sing, then you don't need to auto tune it. But yeah, I would suggest you mess with that more. And um, that is it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.